and what are the best ways to, to understand uh, the users of the internet? I've highlighted this uh, individual, he's a, he's a marketing scholar, Ebert Gummerson. Uh, you might be interested in reading that article. It was a, a, call, a call for research in many ways that he wrote in uh, 2007. Now, it was sort of well before this that I actually got into the, um, the research that I was doing, but this was something which I found justified as what I was doing. He called for more observational research, more observational methodologies. Uh, in other words, trying to engage and explore uh, what people are doing online, which is very non-traditional for, for marketers because marketing is about getting something done quickly uh, and trying to get people to buy products and understand your consumers quickly. If you're observing them, that takes time. You can't be representative. You can't generalize your findings. It's expensive. It can't be quantified. You can't say, well, I'm going to get this amount of return for this amount of effort. And that's kind of what we were talking about uh, earlier with, um, uh, with Evangelos with, in relation to uh, measuring the success of uh, social media. And I believe you had a, a lecture this morning about that as well. How do I measure the, the success of my social media? Uh, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to do. There's many metrics and tools that you can try and use, but there's no sort of clear-cut formula for it. So a lot of marketers traditionally have been against observational methods. And I became much more interested in methodology than I became interested in the actual findings themselves. I started reading a lot of research papers um, and writing research papers, but I wasn't really reading the entire paper. I was reading half of it, just the, the methodology. And you might think, well, that's pretty boring, because the, the main stuff is in what, what people are actually writing about. Uh, but my philosophy was, I don't want to just study the cons uh, consumers on the internet. I want to study them better than anybody else has done. In order to do that, I need to understand them better than anybody else has done. So that's what I set about doing. So I took Gummerson's advice, or rather I used Gummerson's advice to justify what I was already doing. And then we went into the, the sort of uh, <laughs> social media world. We started saying, well, actually, a lot of the marketing now is, is focused on social media. So we get to the 2005-2006 uh, period, uh, and YouTube is out there, and then later on Facebook comes out, and and, and, we, and Twitter and MySpace and the Friends Re Reunited, which was previously there but is sort of uh, kind of redundant at the moment uh, compared to some of these other sites. Uh, marketers started to get interested in, in social media sites and it coincided with, with my research, which was I'm already studying people and observing what they're doing. So what companies now want to do is uh, take this on board. And it was great for me because it, it meant that all of a sudden my stuff was pretty hot. Uh, well, uh, the, a few years earlier, I was sort of, mm, we're not sure about that. That's kind of non-traditional. It's not sort of mainstream. It's not something which really has any feet. Uh, but I justified it. I stuck with it. And then eventually, uh, the, the principle of uh, the marketing uh, became clear. The principle of successful marketing on the, on the Internet was not about making it commercial. It's about trying to build communities, trying to make people want to be a part of your, uh, part of your world. If you go on Facebook and Coca-Cola's Facebook page, they've got 40, 40 million people who like them, or over 40 million people who like them. What does that mean? Just somebody who's bored and they clicked like for, for Coca-Cola? Possibly. But everybody, li everybody likes to be liked. Yeah? And it's interesting that Facebook doesn't ha actually have a dislike feature, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so there's no one there with sort of a negative saying this many people dislike this person or this company. Uh, so it's all about trying to be positive on, uh, on, on Facebook. And Facebook's main problem was they didn't have a viable business model. They didn't have a model which made money. Uh, or they weren't sure how to make money. And so a couple of years back, they stole somebody from Google a couple of people from Google, but this is the most uh, significant person, Sheryl Sandberg. She became the chief operating officer of Facebook. Why was she important? Because she was behind uh, Google's success. She was behind the uh, business model which Google adopted. And it goes back to that Blair Witch idea. She made search, or the AdWord search, uh, a part of the experience of searching. 
So it wasn't that you search for something and then before you get your search results, you see a bunch of uh, sponsorship ads. No, no, no. It's about searching for something and then also being presented with a range of uh, options which are commercial but which are relevant to your searches. So it integrated the experience of search uh, for people who are using Google. And they became very successful at this and they became very uh, good at the, the metrics, at understanding what people are searching for, the relevance, and the search engine became more and more sophisticated. So Facebook said, well, we need, we need something like that. So they employed this person. And that was her main sort of uh, philosophy, and that's where she's taken to Facebook. We see sponsored stories now that are related to what you're doing on Facebook. Uh, they're related to your friends. They're related to things that your friends like. It's making them money. Whether or not it's effective is another, is another uh, question, and it's something which is, is yet to be proved as to how uh, effective uh, the Facebook approach is to the Google approach. But it is making them money. So it was important to, again, go for that idea of integrating the, uh, the actual experience for the user before you try and sell them anything. And that's why it works. And I read a, a, an interesting sort of a article the other day, and I saw an interesting documentary as well about this, uh, and, they, and they concluded that Facebook will continue to be successful as long as it has the trust of the people who use it. So Facebook won't be successful if all of a sudden you think, well, actually, this is a site which is just after uh, my money. As long as it continues to be a, or perceived, I say, and I use that word uh, deliberately, perceived as a community building entity, it will continue to be successful. So if we're going to look at communities, we need to understand them from a perspective, as coming from a marketing background, which we didn't possibly do as much before. We need to understand the cultures of the internet. We need to understand what cultures are being formed on the internet in order to understand who these people are who are using the internet. And notice I'm, I'm, I'm talking about who these people are as third persons, but we all use the internet. right? Uh, but I'm not saying that uh, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm acknowledging that it's all of us, but I'm saying that very deliberately, and you'll see why later on when we talk about ethics. So who are these people in the internet? What are they doing? What cultures are forming on the internet? And who better to go to than the people who've been studying culture for a lot longer than marketers have? The sociologists, the anthropologists. So I started to read the key literature within anthropology. Howard Rheingold. He studied in 1994 virtual communities. It was only about three or four years later, it took three or four years, which is an infinite time if you uh, consider the internet, for somebody with a commercial, I won't say commercial brain, but a commercially geared attitude, went into studying virtual communities. So he studied it, and he used a, a theory called ethnography. Are you guys familiar with this theory? Have you heard of ethnography before? Yeah. yeah. As social media strategist, whatever it is that you want to become with social media, ethnography is a very important research methodology which you need to become familiar with. He used ethnography, which was an observational methodology, to try and understand uh, communities. And he engaged with communities. And they see, the great thing about anthropologists is they're not commercially driven. So all they really want to do is find out about people. They're really excited about finding out about people. Not, they don't care about what they're going to do with that information. They just want to find out as much about people so they can build profiles and develop profiles of individuals so they can understand their perspectives. Which is a completely fresh approach from marketing, which is to understand people so we can sell them products. Anthropologists don't want to do that. Sociologists don't want to do that. They want to understand them for the pleasure of understanding them. And that's quite a fresh approach, which hasn't been used up till now within uh, e-marketing, e or hadn't been used. Turkel, she looks at the uh, Sherry Turkel. She, uh, I've got some selected references at the uh, end of this presentation as well, so you can copy a few of them down. But her book was Life on Screen. Again, this is 1996. I didn't even have an email account then, and I was old enough to have an email account then. Uh, and we've got sociologists who are studying the internet at that point in time. It was that old. It was still, at that point in time, it was, it was quite well developed. But as e-marketers, we didn't pick up on this until a few years later. It took us quite a long time to catch up. So rather than trying to catch up from scratch, my philosophy was, let's try and find out what's already been done. Let's go and 
read the research, let's widen our research interests into the areas of people who have already studied this.